Welcome to The Real News Network. I'm Jessel Noor in Baltimore. Donald Trump is heading into Thursday night's Republican debate after a dominating performance on Super Tuesday, where he secured a wide lead in superdelegates, throwing the GOP establishment into further disarray. Mitt Romney came out of retirements of sorts on Thursday morning to take him on. Here's what I know. Donald Trump is a phony, a fraud. His promises are as worthless as a degree from Trump University. Also on Thursday, MSNBC's morning, on MSNBC's Morning Joe, Trump said he hasn't ruled out a third-party run. But what's gotten less attention in the mainstream media are Trump's racist and xenophobic comments against immigrants and Muslims and the violence that protesters at Trump events have faced. Among those videos that has gone viral recently is that of an African-American student from Louisville, Kentucky. You can see her here getting pushed and shoved out of a Trump rally by what is basically a white mob. They also called her racial slurs. Chop your head! The head Take it! And anybody Get else. out of here! And we're worried about we want water you. We are absolutely, we are going down hill fast. Well, now joining us to discuss this is another one of those protesters who was also kicked out of a Trump rally earlier this week. His name is Zach Choate. He's an Iraq War veteran who was awarded the Purple Heart and overcame many challenges when he returned home from war. Now he's a peace advocate. Um, Zach, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So we want to get you to respond to this video, which has now gone viral all over the internet. It's of an African-American woman uh, from a student from the from University of Louisville of Kentucky being harassed at a Trump rally. We're going to play that again. Chop your head! The head Take it! And anybody Get else. out of here! And we're worried about water morning. We are absolutely, we are going down So we wanted to get your response. Um, the man pictured in that video is a veteran himself. He was a veteran of the Korean War. How do you respond to this situation and to Trump's rhetoric um, overall? Well, I think it's got to stop, you know, the hate speech and, and, you know, the fact that this is the norm for uh, anybody who opposes any of Trump's ideas um, that attend their rallies, you know, and the fact that this is we're seeing this almost uh, immediately after any one of his uh, campaign rallies. And, and it's, it's just the norm now. And then people are just saying, well, that, well, that's just a Trump rally. That's what happens. You know, the hate is, is becoming more acceptable. You know, the, the violence and, 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 and it's unsettling to me. And the fact that the man pictured in that video, he himself is a veteran. He was a veteran of the Korean War. How do you respond to that? Right, right. Well, as I've said before um, with a couple of other interviews, you know, these Trump rallies are supposedly filled to the brim with America's, you know, so-called patriots. That's that's how they they see themselves. And um, you know, for a veteran of uh, the, of any generation, you know, conflict or no conflict uh, involved in their terms, you know, that that that's not the way that you uh, you show your patriotism. Um, you know, I myself, you know, not to take away from that, myself and uh, another veteran. Um, Actually, three other veterans were uh, forcibly removed from a Trump rally in Alabama. And, and you know, the fact that 32,000 people all were in applaud of that, um, you know, it kind of takes you back and makes you wonder. And so we're going to play a bit of that video of you getting kicked out um, for our viewers. Tell me, tell me, isn't it fun to be at a Trump rally? Isn't this fun? Isn't this fun? And so, the, so Donald Trump is sort of celebrating you being thrown out. Um, people are cheering all around. Um, describe exactly why you were there. Um, you, you obviously knew you were kind of putting your body on the line. This is um, whenever people disrupt Trump rallies, they are forcibly thrown out. And actually now at, at, when Trump holds a rally, the first thing they announce is like, please don't beat up the protesters, exactly. surround them and yell Trump. Um, so just describe what, what led you to do this and put your body on the line. Um, well, you know, uh, immediately after my return from Iraq and, and out of the Army in 2008, I, I became kind of, you know, um, 
engulfed in in what it is that we were actually doing there and you know that's aside from the the question you've asked but i kind of got into that um the world of peace activism the world of actually practicing my democratic rights you know because i I believe veterans you know do have a voice and 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 should on all accounts be listened to um from their for their experience you know especially when we're talking about middle eastern issues back to your question um you know Trump, I, I think this his whole campaign was was started on a joke, um, and he, he might be able to uh, to agree with that too. Um, but but now it's taken hold, and um, and it's taken hold uh, based on the fact that he's openly hateful. He's 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 in, uh, his hate speech, his bigotry, his uh, anti-Islam uh, and and xenophobic comments are are very, you know. They're becoming accepted, and uh, I believe the people that feel this way, um, his followers, uh, and maybe aren't so vocal about it, now they're seeing that they have a voice and they can come out there and 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 be as vocal as they want ab- about this. You know, I, I I was describing to the other veteran that's pictured in that in that video as well. Um, at one point before we did the banner drop, that I'd close my eyes for a moment and. And just being in that environment, because we were uh, in the same section as some Black Lives Matter protesters. I'm not even going to call them protesters, some Black Lives Matter um, members. And, and I, you know, hearing their reaction to, to them and, and, and just opposition in general, it, it almost sounded like I, would, I was in a Klan rally. Or, um, uh, you know, I can't imagine... I couldn't imagine that that was my country and that was what I was hearing, you know, so open and uh, so accepted. Um, and so, I don't um, know. and so not only is Trump, um, you know, full of this vitriol and xenophobia, but he's also tapped into this real sense of um, economic despair, the lack of jobs, um, you know, the lack of opportunities that many, um, you know, even white Americans are facing throughout this country. We've, you know, millions of jobs r- were lost um, due to free trade agreements over the last 20 years. And, um, right. you know, this entire country has been affected by that. Um, talk a little bit more, more about why um, that does have an appeal, um, in your opinion, to, to people. And, um, you, know, how, um, you know, how with combining that and, and the, 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 the uh, vitriolic rhetoric, um, why people feel like Trump um, could be a solution for them or could, could help solve their problems or give them a voice? You know, I, you'd, have to, you'd have to ask them. I mean, it's, it's kind of obvious uh, why. I mean, when, when a job's taken away from American, um, you know, they, people like to point the finger, you know. And, um, you know, but I'm, I'm away from that you know it's it's all about the hate speech that he, that he's he's spreading that that's what the the real issue is here all right well thank you so much for joining us all right thank you thank you for joining us at the real news network